complex fluid advanced materials energy technology multiphase system and nanotechnology he is the recipient of appreciation gandhian young technological award 2015 received at the rashtrapati bhavan new delhi he is the coordinator for the state of gujarat and for the union territory of dadra and nagar haveli for state specific plan for technical education in india national perspective plan for technical education is an aict mhrd initiative it is a very important component of the long term planning of technical education by aict and will improve the usefulness of technical education in the country his credential involves three research project including one india russia joint research project sponsored by department of science and technology ministry of science and technology government of india new delhi he is having more than 20 papers in reputed international journal he also contributed for a few book chapters in edited book from renowned publishers dr v n lad was the co developer first for the development of the course on mechanical operation in pedagogical framework under the national mission on education through information and communication technology mhrd government of india anchored by indian institute of technology kharagpur he was the chief he was the guest editor for an international journal separation science and technology taylor and francis uk he is reviewer of many sci journal he delivered many expert lecture and invited talks on the area of his research interest and chaired few session in international conferences he is a life member of indian society for surface science and technology indian society for technical education the indian science congress association material research society of india indian desalination association electron microscopy society of india and indian institute of chemical engineers the chemical engineering department government engineering college baruch welcomes you sir now i request dr v m lard sir to take the charge of the session sir please thank you very much professor rohit sir mr raji for nice introduction thank yes. you once again to uh, professor nay vagela narad kumar vagela sir for inviting me to deliver this lecture thank you so much for giving this opportunity to share my views on this particular topic in your uh, other activity so i'm sharing my screen now So, is my screen visible to you? Yes, sir. Screen is visible. So, so thank you once again. Again, I think theme of this uh, event and this session. So, I'm going to speak something about on the process intensification for. Uh, test remediation so uh, as the main focus of this particular uh, activity is uh, on the waste treatment and uh, uh, so you might be aware what is the difference between the waste management waste remediation uh, and and the zero discharge so not going into that particular uh, thing directly we will focus mainly on the process intensification in the initial uh, during all the time and later on we will shift how can we implement this uh, fundamental concept of the process intensification for waste remediation so uh, 
uh, the main logic behind this uh, process intensification is very interesting. Like uh, always we want to produce more uh, uh, amount of product quantity wise, very good quality of the final product. And uh, also we want to have all this good quantity, more quantity with good quality, extra pure quality of the final product and also in with the limited uh, energy consumption or at the low cost or at the low uh, resources uh, or uh, so the, in order to produce that quality product in a very good enough quantity in a timely position to market is the main focus of the process intensification. So basically this uh, intensification means if you want to produce uh, any material, any product, or if you want to have form for providing the service, then what kind of intensification we need to carry out in our uh, uh, conventional plants or conventional process or at the what are the uh, necessary steps in order to achieve that uh, particular goal for is all included in this intensification of the process. Now, how to implement all these fundamental things uh, in order to have the waste remediation? So the basic uh, things related to this intensification is uh, how to minimize the waste, how to minimize the hazardous effect of the waste, or uh, and in order to achieve this thing, what are the main uh, changes we need to carry out in order to have uh, some offset of the uh, conventional process? So, uh, so th that is what uh, known as that uh, process intensification. So ultimately the result of the process intensification is uh, uh, good quality product, much more quantity which can be available in a limited time and more energy efficient process and ultimately resulting in the low cost proper. That is also one of the aspects of this uh, process intensification. And, uh, uh, so, uh, what are the basic things? See, uh, if you want to produce any any product, uh, like uh, if you are having some reaction like A plus B gives C plus D, then there are some constraints like the rate constant, uh, kinetics of that particular chemical reaction, which will limit our effort in certain way. So what are there in the hand of uh, uh, the designer of that process or the processing plant? What are the flexibility or the resources available with the designer? And accordingly, we need to work on that particular thing in order to achieve the desired goal of intensified process flow. So, uh, Using means ultimately this intensification will ultimately result in a drastic change in the process, which will ultimately result in a significant advantage in terms of energy, in terms of cost, in terms of product quality, in terms of the quantity. But when we talk about that uh, in case of waste remediation, it will ultimately lead to the minimization of the quantity of the waste or the minimization of the toxicity hazardous properties or the hazardous characteristics of that uh, waste product which is coming out from that affluent uh, treatment plant of the industry. So uh, initially, uh, if you want to intensify any existing process, 
we can start with the existing traditional process, conventional process, which is available at our plant site. Uh, and before reaching that any gas liquid or uh, that multiple stream to that uh, after treatment plant, we need to work out on all the processing steps with that conventional process. So initially we need to model how to intensify that existing process. Now this model may be of uh, several types, like including some physical model, some final plan studies, laboratory scale studies, as well as some mathematical modeling nowadays also provide a very efficient tool in order to have that proper intensification of the process. So uh, later on it comes to that how to implement that uh, model in order to have that physical process. So uh, how to implement that uh, model is again requires some input from the existing environment. Like if you want to treat that uh, your acidic waste in your neutralization stream, what are the resources available or what are the other alkaline streams available from your own plant? And accordingly, we need to work out on those kind of resources. Another example is uh, like uh, if you want to locate your effluent treatment plant in certain area of your entire plant site, what is that connectivity of with other processing plants or processing equipment which are delivering that uh, streams which are going directly to that effluent treatment plant. So the overall piping systems as well as uh, some intermediate holdup tanks, and even the sequence of all the main reactors as well as other separating equipment need to be reconsidered in this particular stage while implementing uh, that model which we devised by some sort of critical thinking or some simulation. So ultimately, uh, in short, that intensification for uh, waste remediation starts from the laboratory data, uh, which will give some hazardous property of the waste, uh, as well as uh, treated waste and quantity of that uh, treated waste, as well as quantity of the uh, incoming influence in the effluent treatment plant of the industry. And using this uh, laboratory scale data, how to uh, carry, how to facilitate some change in that uh, main processing step requires some rigorous research and development studies in at the laboratory scale. And these laboratory scale uh, data need to be scaled up in order because ultimately we want to achieve that uh, process intensification goal for our commercial product. Uh, a commercial process. So in order to convert that uh, laboratory or pilot plant studies data to that commercial full scale plant, we need to do that uh, scaling up of that uh, and that is uh, related to that uh, process synthesis. So ultimately, Beginning with that modeling, we, we, by implementation of that particular model, we will reach to that final destination. So that is the main concern. Like uh, maybe if you want to uh, see uh, what is what was the initial step. The initial step was simply this uh, existing traditional process if we are having uh, at our hand or at our plant site. And using some model, this model may be physical model, maybe mathematical model or some simulation tool, which will give us some appropriate model and how to implement that particular model in order to devise the physical 
processing snapshot sequencing of various operations and chemical reactions. So uh, uh, again, if I want to elaborate the same thing, like if I uh, want to reach from one destination to the other destination, what are the routes available? Uh, like uh, one maybe this uh, one maybe uh, I can go at this station and move this place. Another is directly I can go from this road, but this, there may be lots of uh, disturbances may be present in this uh, in this region. So I uh, some situation may not allow to cross this barrier in my travel. Now, so in, in order to avoid this kind of diversion, I need to go, I need to avoid this shortest route. And this is similar to some process constraints or sometimes the chemical kinetics of particular chemical reaction will not allow us to alter the size or the type of that particular reactor or the some utility requirement or some catalytic requirement. And, and, and hence, in order to avoid that thing, we need to uh, find some other ways which will directly and safely and timely allow us to reach to that particular destination. So that is the main thing in this uh, the process intensification. Again, if I, just for example, if I want to uh, travel from my institute to this organizer's institute, uh, this uh, Google is giving me this kind of uh, map. And when I zoom it, it will show different options for uh, traveling through train, traveling to uh, by roadways, and even in the roadways, there are also a few options available. So I, I am having a few options like I can travel through train, I can travel through this vehicle or ultimately this thing. So all options are held as unique features, but will which option will give me the more flexibility for traveling and reaching timely to the destination, that is the main concern here. So, so this is what about that intensification. Now, how to implement this thing in our uh, waste remediation? So, as we have just now discussed, the basic thing is uh, the very first step is the mathematical modeling. And again, in this uh, mathematical model, there are two types of models. Uh, one is known as the deterministic model and the other is stochastic models. So ultimately these two types of models depend on that randomness. Uh, uh, so basically this uh, stochastic models uh, incorporate some uh, uh, inherent randomness, whereas in the deterministic models, uh, associated with some sort of output of model which is uh, fully determined by the parameter values and the initial conditions and using that condition we need to train some mathematical expression and we're following that mathematical equation or that model equation we can as well as uh, have that required parameter and that required parameter need to be optimized again for optimization we need to we can adopt uh, any trial and error method practically, or you can also go for uh, some sort of simulate, uh, optimization techniques or design of experiment will also help us in that case in order to eliminate some data and to have the optimized value of our required parameters. Now further, uh, that uh, ultimately when we implement that model, so what uh, will be the final achievement? So maybe the process equipment may be the same, 
or sometimes the flow sequence may get changed, sometimes the entire equipment get replenished or replaced by some other significant change in the geometry as well as the type of the reactor, type of the separator. But ultimately, the final intensified process will give more safety, more safer design with the same product or same initial and final session. Second is the environmental friendly design because why in such intensification when we are talking about that waste remediation, we need to think about that sustainability. Now, what's the sustainability of this particular process? Uh, and if we are going to change some uh, processing equipment by some more sophisticated equipment or instrument, what, how flexibly it can cope up with some new instrumentations and how that manpower will be trained in order to handle that particular equipment more safely. Uh, and uh, besides this, we need to also think about that environmental sustainability and also the market sustainability as well in the same case. So some fundamental concepts of the clean engineering sustainable uh, environmental processing we need to consider in order to design or implement that uh, process intensification when we try directly from the mathematical modeling. So uh, another advantage is a significant increase of the transport rate, mass transfer rate, heat transfer rate uh, will get uh, will will be greatly increased and hence we can have that rate of the production of final product may be very significantly increased. So, but what to, in the case of the waste uh, remediation, so in that case, uh, how can we reduce the overall quantity of the to waste significantly in that quantity. So that is the main concern uh, while doing the process intensification for the waste remediation. And from, uh, from, uh, ultimately, this uh, when we implement the process uh, intensification for, uh, from this uh, mathematical model, we can also come out with some smaller pilot plants uh, or, or even some uh, smaller size the plant to which we can have uh, the same or the better quality of the product, but ultimately that uh, waste throughput may be drastically minimized. So uh, ultimately all these things uh, will result in more safer design and also cost effective as well as energy efficient processing. So these are the main advantages of uh, process intensification. And uh, what we need to do, especially for uh, safer design in order to implement that uh, intensification. So we need to minimize that overall piping length means the overall transportation length of the fluids need to be reduced. Operation, operation, operation steps need to be reduced, overall storage tank size, or that overall intermediate storage tanks need to be reduced, or the size of them, all this equipment need to be reduced. So, means, uh, when we talk about the uh, decrease of the size or the decrease in that or length of transportation of the fluid, in that case, we need to consider uh, like ourselves as in the design stage only. Uh, so lots of things in the process intensification starts at the design stage only. And uh, some moderate uh, 
change in the composition of the constituents may ultimately lead to uh, lots of uh, savings in the material of construction of various vessels as well as uh, processing steps may be easier if we make some moderate change in some material. Uh, this is the special thing we need to consider because ultimately our final product is fixed. Sometimes the raw material is also fixed. But what are the other intermediates or intermediate uh, processing steps involved in the overall conventional uh, process? We are having in our hand to play with some certain parameters. Accordingly, we need to change that uh, available parameters moderately, and this will ultimately lead to the final design, which will be more safer than the initial one. So uh, in order to do these the two things are of lots of importance, the composition of the constituents and the thermodynamics, because the thermodynamics ultimately deal with that uh, thermal conductivity, the heat or the heat capacity, enthalpy of the substance, and hence uh, uh, for some um, even even uh, simple mixing may be associated with lots of uh, heat of mixing or heat of solution, and that's why we need to consider this uh, energy transfer as well. Uh, and even the moderate change in that uh, temperature pressure condition sometimes uh, ultimately results in lots of drastic change in that overall heat transfer or mass transfer. Uh, then. Mm, the third component is to substitute another component in order to avoid certain hazardous materials. So if possible, if, if it is in the hand of the designer, then the third option is to choose the least hazardous process route or the less hazardous chemical, which can substitute the most hazardous chemical, which is going to be utilized in our final product. So, means ultimately we need to think about the toxicity or hazardous characteristics of the chemicals used in the processing step, and uh, the simplification of the operation. We ultimately solve lots of uh, complexity of operation and the manpower can easily handle the uh, simplified operations. Even though some sophisticated uh, instrumentations will also facilitate uh, easy control by the workers who are working in that plant, in the plant area and hence uh, lock the proper alarm systems, proper uh, of, uh, control or the flow control will be necessary in order to simplify the process which will ultimately result in the smaller size and safer design. So like uh, this, just for example, like uh, if you want to remove the heat, we can have the options of quenching uh, with uh, some other material, implementation of the coils in the reactor or providing the jacket outside the wall of the uh, vessel. Now, which out of these three will facilitate your purpose for, for heat removal? If the contamination is the solemn, what should be the better thing? If the heat transfer coefficient is the ultimate uh, driving factor, then what need to be chosen from the jackets or coils? What are the corrosive environment? If your coil is going to be immersed in your processing fluid, like uh, suppose you are having this uh, reactor, and uh, if you want to utilize this coil, and if you are using this 
soil in such a way so So suppose this is your cooling coil. Now this uh, entire uh, equipment will get filled with the processing fluid and hence this coil is going to be submerged in that inside that processing fluid and if your so what I mean to convey is in this case, uh, even though you are, if you have chosen the, your material of construction of the coil, which will ultimately result in uh, higher thermal conductivity, higher thermal conductivity, you know, uh, less uh, heat transfer resistance. Uh, and at the same time, what, what is that uh, thermal media which is going to flow inside this coil accordingly, the material will be compatible to that thermal fluid which is flowing inside this coil. Now, so, so that uh, nature of that thermal fluid will ultimately affect the material of construction, but at the same time, the constraint is the thermal conductivity. Huh. Now, here when we are using the coil at that time, its outer and external surface of the coil will be also exposed to this environment because uh, uh, it is in direct contact with the processing fluid and hence if your processing fluid is corrosive, it will also corrode the outer surface of this uh, coil and that why in, uh, in that case the utilization of the coil is not advisable. So what to do that in, in that uh, case? So in that case, jacket will be the better option. Jacketed reactor will be the better option, and hence only this uh, reaction vessel wall. We need to consider, we need to bother about the material uh, which will provide us the less heat transfer resistance, more high thermal conductivity, and accordingly, that the corrosion environment uh, will be only the, uh, inside sur at the inside surface of this uh, wall, and outside surface is normally that for heating or cooling fluid. Now, in the case of uh, mass transfer, if we want to change any subjects which are facilitated by mass transfer, then is it in our hand to change the diffusion of some substance? How to alter the mass transfer coefficient for particular process, uh, mass transfer separation operation? Then, if it is the mass transfer diffusion, particular uh, the diffusion, then corrective transport, or is it uh, what kind of uh, diffusion is taking place? Uh, what is the degree of turbulence in the fluid, or what is ultimately? Uh, leading to that large chunk or eddies through which the mass ones were taking place in your reaction media. And uh, interfacial mass transport, uh, this is very important thing over here, interfacial mass transfer. Uh, uh, in, there are lots of chemical reactions as well, lots of uh, mass transfer processes uh, in chemical industries which require special attention when we want to uh, transfer one species from one phase to the other. See, for example, if I Suppose here there is a membrane 
and on this side we are having uh, uh, one liquid or you can consider suppose this is a large droplet and this is continuous This is your continuous liquid and here in this continuous uh, blue liquid one drop of uh, this another liquid colored with the green color and assume suppose one of the constituents like this A is going to transfer from the bulk of this blue fluid and it is going to enter in this drop. So what are the resistances offered by the system in order to travel components? This is A from this place to this place. This is your station number one, this is your station number two, and while traveling, it has to cross this barrier. See, uh, here this is uh, Now, how much resistance is offered by this fluid itself? Any idea? You can interrupt me anytime if you have any doubts or any query. So I have asked you what are the resistances offered by this, uh, or what are the parameters which are ultimately result in that uh, different kind of resistance experienced by this species A while traveling from the bulk of the fluid to this boundary. Yes. Huh? Anybody? Uh, so, continue, sir. Pardon? No. Continue the session. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I have asked uh, something like uh, what will be the overall uh, uh, resistance offered by the species A while traveling from the bulk liquid to the boundary of that droplet. So, so see. Uh, depending, uh, do you think uh, in this case, if you are uh, overall, uh, th this distance also matters. Instead of your A, A species is available at this point, rather if it is available at this point, then this large distance it has to travel from this point to this point. So extra resistance because of the extra length it has to cover. So now, Second thing, first is the distance overall. Second is that viscosity of this liquid through which it is traveling from bulk phase to this interface. So the viscosity of this blue colored liquid. Next, if we are having agitator, Suppose this entire thing is placed in a vessel and if we are having some agitator or impeller over here, that will also cause lots of uh, convective current and that's why that will facilitate easy transfer of this species A from this place to this interface. Okay, so these are things we in, in our hand, if you implement this kind of agitation, then this resistance can be easily eliminated or it, it can be not even in some case we can eliminate but we can reduce up to certain extent. Now the second once it uh, once it entered how anyhow suppose it has entered cross this barrier 
and once it enter over here it will completely intermingle with this uh, liquid or it can go directly to the bulk of the liquid number 2 green liquid because it may be compatible with that it is it may have the good affinity with that particular chemical ha na so you can consider like uh, this may be the example of uh, some uh, solvent which is used in some effluent treatment plant in order to uh, extract hazardous component from the effluent stream so if you are uh, liquid if you are liquid if you are this liquid number 2 is having high affinity of the component a which is very hazardous in your effluent coming out from your plant so you can use the solvent in such a way which is having more affinity and that's why it will preferentially dissolve only a in it and only a so 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 the resistance of for experienced by this species a after crossing this boundary will be very negligible in that case so where does what will control this entire mechanism what will control this entire mechanism so that is how proficiently it can cross this barrier how proficiently how efficiently and how faster it can cross this boundary interfacial boundary that is very important because if this is see the mechanical adjustment or providing lots of turbulence can facilitate uh, uh, reduction or the decrease of this uh, resistance and due to this uh, compatibility or high affinity this of a with this uh, liquid 2 liquid number 2 it can easily dissolve over here but the extra effort need to be provided how what is the extent of the resistance which is experienced by the species a while crossing this boundary and entering from this phase to this phase that is more important so what are what are the things need to be done at the interfaces how to make that interface permeable for transfer of species a in this case so we need to look out that uh, thing of interfacial mass transport as well and that's why in order to facilitate this thing we need to bother about this interfacial property tuning so what are those interfacial properties for example very simple it is like uh, interfacial tension play a major role in this particular thing and if the interfacial tension is decreased a can be easily penetrate in that uh, liquid b and hence we can control this entire process so accordingly this uh, mass uh, transfer or the heat transfer operation will also give some uh, insights of uh, how can we treat our effluent uh, before uh, sending them to neutralization tank or for clarity circulation do we need to homogenize the overall temperature of the streams which are coming from different plant locations and then they are merging together at that time that extra temperature gradient or that the concentration gradient what will be the ultimate effect on uh, for the downstream processing like neutralization in the etp or uh, clarity circulation so we need to think about that thing and that's why if you take example of uh, like uh, so like uh, 
five. So, uh, like uh, it's, it's considered like here, I can write like these are the mass transfer common processes and uh, these are the heat transfer driven processes. So, uh, like, uh, if you are having some uh, reactor, some reactor or agitator, huh? so that uh, like that reactor or agitator, like for example, if it is CSTR. It will be associated with a uh, lot of transfer as well as mass transfer. Uh, but mainly governed by the chemical kinetics, and that's why the action is low. Uh, and uh, if you are having some uh, like pulsed column, distillation column, then lots of things to do with the mass transfer rather than heat transfer. So that column type of equipment we need to place over here. And uh, if it is uh, having some rotating a pack based uh, power or the reactor and also it will have more mass transfer and less heat transfer. Accordingly, if you are having some micro reactors uh, like uh, some micro channels uh, which will have high mass transfer as well as uh, high heat transfer rate and that's why uh, why while siphoning as mass transfer, we can put it at this place because that kind of uh, micro reactor it facilitates high heat transfer as well as high mass transfer rate. Uh, if you take a simple example of a uh, simple plate type heat exchanger or any other scaling tube heat exchanger, fin, uh, then, then you can locate it at this place because it will ultimately lead to lots of heat transfer coefficient, lots of heat transfer take place, but accordingly, uh, no any mass transfer take place in that uh, plate type heat exchanger or any other uh, fins facilitated heat exchanger or even extended surface heat exchangers. Uh, uh, if we are having some assembly like uh, heat exchanger as well as uh, separator reactor, so that kind of assembly associated with some uh, heat transfer device, uh, if it's going to be heated, again recycled back and occasionally some product is taken out and one of the stream is continuously fed as a reactant. So in this case, uh, depending on the extent of this uh, reflux uh, or recycling, the mass transfer will also can get increased and at the same time the heat transfer rate will also, heat transfer extent will also increase. So in order to intensify the process, we need to uh, reduce, we need to decrease the size of equipment, species of equipment, we need to decrease the path, flow path, transferring path, we need to uh, decrease that number of operations, number of equipment, and ultimately that uh, space. So the process intensification, when we need, when we are talking about this sustainability, uh, so that uh, sustainable processing requires so the sustainable processing requires obviously process intensification because we are talking right now regarding the uh, process intensification. So this can be achieved by process intensification of 
of intensification and how how this intensification ultimately help us in achieving the final product or that uh, final service or the device uh, so in order to achieve that thing we need to uh, implement it and that implementation will ultimately uh, related targeted towards the formation of product product design or process design. And on the other hand, this intensification will lead to some uh, uh, new phenomena of uh, at the, which is occurring at the molecular level and that will ultimately give us some molecular species or this kind of design will ultimately give us some device and we can have final targeted product or the device available at this end and this device is uh, matching with that our own requirement what was produced or what was fabricated by the conventional techniques so that is the main concept of the uh, sustainability and intensification. So, <clears throat> uh, so uh, rather than converting, rather than uh, altering that uh, unit operations or altering that uh, uh, certain piece of equipment or the flow frequencies. Uh, in the existing process, if we do this process intensification at the early stage, then it will be more appropriate, which will save money as well as time and effort in order to uh, achieve that desired device. So, that kind of process design uh, requires some sort of heuristics and uh, 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 need to be done in the early stages of the design only. So the pollution prevention during the process development and design is the part most important for any design engineer uh, in order to uh, minimize that uh, waste generation or uh, that uh, in terms of quantity as well as quality of the so these are the main points we need to consider while uh, process intensification of our uh, environmental design process design. The articulation of the process objective, determination of the constraints, and how can we implement these uh, constraints? Uh, how can we implement our ideas, new ideas, considering the constraints on hand? Uh, accordingly, we need to work out at the design stage, and that will facilitate the easy processing, uh, easy uh, job for process engineer. Uh, so the use of all the information from preliminary engineering, uh, commissioning, uh, scale-up, plan scale-up, trial runs, and all the associated economic analysis, we need to worry about while tackling uh, that cost-effectiveness of the final product. Because the main objective uh, for that uh, pollution prevention into the early process development uh, strategy is the cost-effectiveness as well as the more safety. Uh, rather than so uh, it's uh, like something like proactiveness of the design engineer which will ultimately result in more sophisticated plans sophisticated instrumentations and at the same time the cost effectiveness safety of the working personnel as well as that uh, environmental sustainability all the things are considered while uh, pointing that process uh, 
the rainbow always adjusted. So the, this is a maze in the early stages, uh, usually dictates of frequent development activities, which include higher plant studies, like uh, what will be the size of your carry fluctuator, what will be the size of your uh, neutralization tank, do we need to provide alkaline bricks, uh, acidic bricks uh, for our neutralization tank, what are the types of, uh, or what is the property, or what are the parameters for the effluent streams coming out, coming to your effluent treatment plant from different plant locations. Accordingly, what are the characteristics? Do we need to uh, mix them prior to entering the neutralization tank, or if it is more acidic, better treated with that some alkaline substance and then to go for further processing or further treatment? Um, that needs to be considered at this stage. Uh, and uh, What will be the overall time requirement for the processing of your effluent thing is also uh, important to consider during the design stage only. So, what are the examples? So, if we are having the ch available choice, then better to prefer to the continuous process. because it is having lots of easy control, optimization of the process flow diagrams, like uh, uh, we can have that uh, very hard. Suppose you are having different uh, stages, uh, like uh, from this. Suppose uh, you one heat storage tank coming to heat exchanger, your stream goes, and then some sort of separator, some separator truck or is coming, bottom product is again going to some other reactor, again going to get heated or cooled, and again mixed with something else in order to have that chemical reaction to occur. So if we are having this kind of series of equipments, how to locate uh, this entire thing? What is advisable? If we, what will be the overall cost of lifting all this raw material at the topmost floor of your plant, of uh, topmost floor of your plant, and then all this uh, heat exchanger you can place at that uh, topmost floor. Then at the bottom, just below it, you can place this, this. Again, this reactor will add this floor, and these two assembly will rest at the ground floor, and we can have the final product available at the ground floor. So the only cost involved in this particular operation is to lift the material from this to how to increase the potential energy that cost is of importance over here. And once it reaches, uh, uh, it will completely flow with uh, only due to gravity only. But uh, if we are having this kind of process sequence, horizontal layout, in that case, we need to provide the pop either here or intermediate position, then calculating this. Uh, Tracer loss, what is occurring in all these kind of equipment. So accordingly, the pumping cost will be. So ultimately, we need to consider the pumping cost in this case as well as pumping cost for lifting this material to this elevation. So uh, in case of uh, I mean. Uh, then the flat system.
and the avoiding of this uh, leakage. So the question may be this, uh, what to do with the base remediation? So again, for this uh, waste uh, remediation, we need to think about uh, what are the equipment going to be used and what are the methods in that survey. So Equipments and the equipments associated with your ETP in your e effluent treatment plant, maybe uh, some reactor, in for reaction to carry out some uh, chemical reaction or chemical separation. So the reaction and separation equipment means some separators like clarification reactions like uh, neutralizing and incinerators, etc. So uh, uh, incinerator, neutralizing tank, uh, polishing to bond, coming to the category of the equipment which are associated with some chemical reaction. As a, that is, flat calculators, your separators, filters, strain uh, uh, come under this category of this separation. And when we talk about this intensification for this uh, based radiation in case of the method, so for methodology, Then we need to think about uh, what are the other options available for that uh, based remediation. Is there any other processing route which will ultimately lead to your main uh, uh, the same product, but at the, the which will minimize your uh, low rate of your stream or the quantity of your effluent stream. So that requires some use of uh, uh, multifunctional reactors. Multifunctional reactor is the first thing and second, Think about some different energy sources. Like uh, if, if you are having that uh, particular chemical reaction, how do you supply heat of reaction to it? So now, see, uh, even this uh, sound waves also create lots of energy. And this sound energy can be effectively implemented in order to uh, Reduce that barrier for uh, reaction between your uh, reactants in order to form desired product. So that concept is utilized in that uh, sonochemical reactor. Yeah. For example, just uh, I'm giving the, uh, this uh, example.
ton of chemical reactor. So that will so here, take the energy from the fornication. Right? Fornic uh, hydrothermal cavitation uh, or fornication simply. Uh, then some uh, sort of hybrid separations like uh, multifunctional reactor accordingly multifunctional separator. Or also known as hybrid. hybrid separators and go for some other processing rules. Alternate process. So this may ultimately lead to this uh, remediation and uh, uh, for example if I elaborate the same thing over here uh, like uh, the traditional technology if you are using some PSTR or any other neutralizer simple conventional neutralizer uh, then uh, what need to be done in order to Uh, in conventional neutralizer, what happens? So the mix, just the streams get uh, mixed in some, uh, uh, like uh, it, it's just schematic I'm showing. So all the streams get simply mixed, you know, schematically. Then the, in, in intensified process, what makes uh, it different? from the rest of the thing is uh, it is the, the type of the reaction, type of the reactor may be different. And now, so for example, that uh, technology like eliminating the large size of reactor may also save lots of space, lots of uh, capital investment, lots of energy, and that's why some micro technology, you know, micro reactor technology. So the micro reactors, as they are, they contain very tiny size, accordingly the micro channel, <coughs> which can be easily fabricated by some sophisticated techniques as well as some conventional techniques and uh, this will ultimately result in lots of benefits and this benefits uh, involved that overall volume of your reactants utilize means overall volume of additives or the intermediates used during the process is very late uh, uh, and uh, the uh, selectivity is the very important thing you are here. Selectivity and accordingly that yield of your final VI. And further considering all these things, see, if you are using the micro reactor in your ETP and your ETP flow rate is, let's say, for example, your flow, your uh, liquid is come generated, liquid effluent generated about 5 meter cube per hour time, this is your flow rate. Can it be cope up with, can your uh, 
micro reactor cover with this chloride huh? what will be the size of the micro reactor if it is uh, containing some channels micro channels the size may be varying from few micrometers to some hundreds of micrometer and how can it facilitate this match uh, high throughput of the fluent strings in that case so that's why we must check for uh, reliability reliability of your final uh, chosen micro reactor how can it be integrated with uh, similar kind of other micro reactors and all can be separate process uh, parallel fashion which can facilitate your handling of 5 meters to per hour this or any other higher flow rate so that is a big challenge in the especially in the case of the micro reactor so that uh, decreased in the effluent quantity and uh, decrease in the concentration Accordingly, your uh, chemical usage in treatment of that stream will be different, and hence that uh, micro reactor option, whether it is advisable to use or not, that can be identified. So, at uh, decrease in the carbon footprint, so this three are the major uh, items which are related to uh, especially for waste treatment plants and uh, for absolutely especially process intensification for your waste Well, this is a uh, very old uh, <coughs> technique for uh, recovering gold from gold ore uh, where uh, all these gears are made up of some wood material and these are the shafts through connected with this gear mechanism and, and on the far end it contains some educator, educator blade they are residing or uh, simply supported by the periphery of this reactor and hence these are series of reactors one two and three and uh, afterwards all, all of this is the S reactor and ultimately it will go to this kitchen reactor like that and finally it can uh, expect it for salt salt material and which is potential so this is the traditional process uh, and uh, lots of things need to be done still further even though there are lots of uh, advancement has been uh, available in this technique which will give us uh, some idea regarding how can you implement your uh, material like what may be the appropriate thing in order to achieve that thing uh, so, so what will be the investment over here in this case uh, if you simply see like uh, uh, what can be done so far we have discussed uh, lots of things for general purpose intensification so just for, for taking this example how can you what are the things that can be reduced for process uh, you, you consider the process intensification. Uh, so, so see, uh, if you, if you hear, what, can, what are the things that can be replaced or that is already replaced by somebody else before us? Uh, educators, this gear mechanism. Uh, so in what area we can try over here? So we can reduce, so that will ultimately result in this uh, decrease of overall investment, space, space, 
then sign raw materials MRC means inventory also. Also investment. So all these things get reduced if you provide, if you put some effort considering the concepts what I, what uh, we just now discussed. And accordingly, accordingly, what will be the result? The ultimate result will be, what will be the overall result? result is that uh, overall production rate will be much more. And even the quality of your final product. In, in this particular example, the overall concentration, overall concentration of your Final product will be much more. And at the same time, this uh, energy will also get saved. So, ultimately, in order to achieve this, all these things the reduction in all these parameters, reduction in all this space, time, energy, inventory, investment, so what we need to do. Now, so we need to work out on the size of this uh, equipment, size of equipment need to be uh, reconsidered and the methodology of processing steps needs to be reconfigured in order to have So as uh, we discussed this energy efficient operation, most cost effective, time effective operation, uh, which will ultimately decrease that uh, size of your overall processing staff, processing unit, as well as uh, result in the decrease by product in while performing to that sustainability. Is it a sustainable solution if the byproduct is reduced, byproduct uh, quantity is decreased? Will it give a sustainable substitute? How do you rate this uh, item? So when we talk about the sustainable at that time, we need to bother about uh, its overall environmental impact as well as the other market availability of your final product, its composition, and if the byproducts are formed, and what are the alternate routes in order to discard from the plant site or uh, for reuse in the own plant or some uh, uh, how to market that product, uh, or is there anything required in order to evaluate to that uh, particular uh, byproduct accordingly? This uh, degrees of waste that will also ultimately result in that loss. And uh, can have uh, easy uh, or, or more safe, and uh, the desired goal will be achieved by this. And finally, the quality of your uh, treated water at the cost of uh, extra effort used in the design stage only. So this extra effort in the during put in practice by during the design stage that will only result in this the final quality of the treated waste is very 
So accordingly, the overall size uh, of your uh, ticket affluent will also drastically reduce, uh, and overall uh, COD COD all these parameters can be minimized so as prescribed by that uh, local government authority. And hence, this uh, um, uh, just for example, like if you use this uh, kind of things like. Uh, if you want to use some these kind of micro reactors, uh, this micro reactors ultimately uh, incorporate some sort of uh, micro grooves or the uh, tiny volumetric uh, elements which uh, kind of reactions can occur. And there are different techniques available uh, through which we can uh, fabricate these uh, micro shells. Uh, here it is like uh, you can use it like 3D printing, which will result in simple. Which uh, takes on the uh, uh, simple steps like uh, drawing of that drawing generation, or, you know, some sort of appropriate software. And then your 3D printer will print that uh, object in the way they sort the of command given to it. And you can have this uh, tiny reactor. Or micro reactors available at uh, your average scale. So, there are proprietary uh, materials as well as proprietary machines are usually available right now, which will give you lots of flexibility for change over to the kitchen and also the filtration of uh, some uh, uh, properties of the streams as well. So ultimately, the multiphase flow uh, with the external force field, uh, if uh, your uh, affluent treatment stream contains some uh, metallic uh, element that can be easily removed or separated if uh, external magnetic field is provided. Just for example, uh, and uh, membrane separation operation, if they are assisted, assisted by ultrasound, or if there are some reactors which can be heat integrated, or some microwave reactors can also facilitate that. This sonication facilitated by this membrane separation operation that is also a good option, uh, one of the good options. And uh, there's reactive separations in which your uh, reaction and separations occur simultaneously. So these are the main uh, things you need to consider for, especially for this remediation and uh, the streams uh, which are coming to the affluent treatment plant and from the chemical processing industries can be divided into the pure liquid. Uh, and again, this liquid in turn can be classified as organic liquid, aqueous uh, liquid streams. Uh, and uh, another thing is your multiphase flow where your gas and vapor 
bubbles may be or, or um, associated with your liquid streams or sometimes uh, even direct gas or vapor can be uh, connected with that gas system through which uh, it is on plant sites. So, <clears throat> so this uh, absorption need to be uh, reconsidered. What kind of uh, proper contact mechanism? What is the driving force in this uh, gas liquid operation? Is it the chemical reaction? Uh, if it is chemical absorption of gas by means of chemical option, uh, is there any way in which we can uh, use that uh, reaction resistance no, or decision resistance accordingly? Uh, if it is a liquid liquid uh, extraction, then uh, is it uh, associated with chemical reaction? Do we have another solvent? which can more preferably dissolve one of the constituents from the other liquid stream. And uh, accordingly, the reactive distillation, where the distillation as well as the reaction occur simultaneously and as soon as the product forms, the formed product or the byproduct can be simultaneously separated from that uh, zone. So that is reactive distillation Similarly, the reactive absorption means the chemical reaction, as well as absorption takes place on the energy. And uh, reactive chromatography. Uh, so, these are two areas where there is some sort of multi phase uh, phenomena are very often very common, and we need to look at that uh, thing in order to achieve this uh, basic things which are related to. Uh, energy, we need to consider this energy, synergy, structure, and time. So we need to think about all, the, all these four parameters in order to design that fluid uh, fluid uh, uh, contacting systems, which will ultimately provide a uh, good approach for process intensification because it needs to address all these four domains for your process or processing steps. Or processing liquid melts. So, uh, again, when we talk about this, uh, how to implement this for uh, affluent treatment plant. So, in uh, chemical reaction like in neutralization tank, we can yeah. which will ultimately reduce that uh, energy barrier for your cells and uh, chemical reaction can be achieved in a good fashion. So, that is one of the aspects how can we uh, intensify the process using ultrasonic cavitation. Where uh, fornication means uh, that fornication reactor contains uh, uh, some fornication horn. See, there are two ways through which we can uh, provide ultrasound. Uh, maybe high power, low frequency. So, two things are important over here. That one is that power. And another is frequency. Uh, 
So we need to combine this uh, appropriate parameter for your ultrasound. And also ultrasound may be a point source. You can provide this ultrasound by point for which uh, in which your ultrasonic probe, ultrasonic probe uh, will provide that ultra, will generate the ultrasonic waves uh, at its tip and uh, that will give you uh, this ultimate uh, ultrasound in which it is immersed. And another option is if you are having some vessel, some container, and that container itself is in the surface, if it is uh, uh, generating that ultrasonic wave, or the, it will ultimately generate some tiny bubbles, and that bubbles will collapse, and the ultrasonic cavitation will occur. So, that ultrasonic bath. So, there are two things bath and ultrasonic horn ultrasonic horn or ultrasonic bath. These two things are available. Uh, currently, they are also utilized in chemical industries as well as in pharmaceutical industries in order to uh, provide that ultrasonic cavitation to that reacting media in order to uh, facilitate that chemical reaction using the sort of chemistry principle. So the mechanical effects of mixing and disintegration can be easily achieved in that case, and high energy processes for reactions is also easily facilitated by means of this kind of horn, where uh, in the near vicinity of this uh, zone there are lots of uh, heat waves. So, uh, and uh, what is the need? Why do we need to look at certain factors in order to uh, achieve or in order to view that uh, mixing tendency of the liquid that is also important and hence uh, these are the factors so what you can see, see on your screen now uh, like uh, how can we implement this uh, entire mixing a particular process, or uh, why do we bother about uh, mixing for certain treatment processing steps? So, most often we need to homogenize that uh, entire effluent streams which are coming from different subparts of your processing plant. Then, uh, if we are having a stream which is having uh, throughout the same temperature concentration of the species, then the overall loading or the overall effort required at that uh, effluent treatment step can be easily designed or can they can be easily uh, looked at, can be easily addressed if something went wrong. If goes wrong, especially in case of uh, heat transfer and mass transfer controlled. So, again,
So, what is the role of the person who is exactly engaged in this uh, process in quantification? So, the prediction, the very first thing is to predict the degree of mixing in the neutralizing tank in your HTP. Uh, and for that, uh, that mixing index need to be identified for uh, different kind of streams. And evaluating the rate of mixing, how fast or uh, how quickly does the uh, stream can get mixed together. Accordingly, adoption of alternate neutralizing agents will also facilitate that process, which will provide you better mixing, mixing. And at the same time, most of the time, this uh, mixing is associated with uh, that uh, heat. Uh, heat of pollution or heat of mixing is uh, important phenomena. Uh, which is associated with the mixing, and that's why we need to bother about that uh, any thermal exchange, thermal energy exchange with the surrounding, how to uh, control it, and accordingly the kinetic of neutralization reaction. Uh, so these are the main points it will look like this uh, engineer uh, for identification of uh, process and for effluent treatment for, for this remediation. And uh, so uh, just now, uh, as uh, ultimately uh, the uh, streams uh, which is coming to your appliance treatment plant just prior to the final disposal site, or that uh, maybe the last uh, operation before transporting your uh, final waste, which is going to be discarded, uh, we need to the proper attention for mixing phenomena for this and hence that uh, different kind of mixtures utilized for this uh, process instrument are sometimes this static mixtures static mixers accordingly uh, some uh, static mixture will also uh, mix some streams and heat of pollution can get generated and this heat of pollution can be uh, eliminated by means of some sort of heat exchanger. But while we are talking about uh, process intensification, not that uh, conventional heat exchanger, but it will require the compact heat exchanger. That uh, uh, new technology, which is uh, facilitated by that uh, microfluidics, that will also play important role here in the mixing. But uh, only challenge is how to facilitate that uh, uh, high throughput. High throughput. Will preview the micro reactors, micro mixers. Accordingly, our uh, type of reaction and type of effects need to be in this slide. And uh, so, ultimately, in order to achieve all these things, even though you are going to adapt at the appropriate context, uh, compact heat exchangers, static mixtures, uh, or even micro mixtures, but ultimately, things we need to worry about is the property of the streams, uh, properties of the constituents in each streams, fluid dynamic characteristics, how the convective currents or the turbulence appear in that during the mixing. The geometry of your flow domain and the design of the overall mixing device need proper attention in order to achieve appropriate uh, unit mixing unit systems at your hand.
So there are two things is the intense micro-mixing, how does it affect on that the mass plus results and that or that much of a how it is applied. So the intrinsic micro-mixing uh, for micro-mixing, different uh, types, different designs, different geometries of micro-mixing are uh, available currently uh, in the uh, in the lens one more that was uh, in the micro-mixing, whereas uh, the turbulent facilitated micro-mixing also used in some cases, but uh, nowadays uh, that micro it's uh, facilitated uh, Mixing of the fine fluid in uh, your fine vessels, where the one of the additives uh, consumption is also very less, uh, for all time and space consumption is also very less. So, not it. But the major, uh, as we discussed uh, right now, the major challenges uh, arise over here is this uh, the size, size, how to treat that entire string. Uh, using this kind of micro reactors or tiny reactors. So, the scaling up of your device is how to easy integration of uh, tiny uh, microfluidic devices <coughs> and uh, uh, even, even some for some of the processes uh, or equipment are not proven and that requires some trial and error or, or some sort of special laboratory scale experiments for specific type of processing environment. So lots of research and development is required and market fine and at the same time we need to worry about the water plant capacity which must be met in order to uh, economic design uh, for our intensive life process. So because that's overall rate of return is also important in mind considering all that uh, processing dumping steps. And hence, uh, this is, uh, shows how that uh, uh, interfacial engineering, some fundamental concepts of the interfacial engineering, uh, how does that uh, provide some information on uh, this uh, uh, property of the fluid, like you can have the uh, garments which cannot get completely wetted by rainwater, so that that kind of uh, material can be very useful and it's a sort of trial in different environments. Accordingly, that uh, fluid present in this kind of uh, body lotion or some material that is going to be utilized for uh, that particular specific application, but that the processing condition or handling condition may be different during the transportation. It must affect the wide uh, comparatively less deformation, but when you apply this cream on your skin, skin at that time it must, must possess uh, the less viscosity and that less apparent viscosity can be facilitated by uh, using this uh, concept of the colloids and interfacial phenomena. Uh, so according to this uh, glass, that uh, reflective power of this uh, glass, uh, this screen also provides that concept. So that's the overall uh, screen and how that reflects that angle of refraction. So how to uh, tune the properties at the interfaces is also of lot of importance here. And uh, uh, accordingly, uh, if we are having uh, lots of foam formation in your uh, effluent treatment plant, how to break the foam easily? Uh, so deforming agent need to be utilized and that deforming agent, I mean, if you know the intrinsic phenomena, how this liquid bridge uh, is uh, going to get uh, destroyed by the action of the attractive force of these two droplets if these two droplets competition is very high in comparison with the overall strength of this liquid bridge it will get break and both the uh, liquid get uh, 
coalesce with each other and they will merge each other with each other and hence uh, uh, we can have that uh, droplet and ultimately we can have the phase separation and this phenomena may ultimately lead to the uh, separation of uh, removal of that or uh, elimination or reduction decrease of this formation of growth or the foam. So some surface agents are useful for elimination for altering the surface interfacial transition, and that's why we can achieve that separation. So uh, we, in our experiments, we use some uh, ultrasound for our uh, separation operation, and we found that uh, the what will be the most appropriate uh, back processing parameter for ultrasound, uh, which will result in uh, appropriate formation of that uh, uniform size uh, droplet in our oil and water emulsion. So we use the ultrasonic probe as well as uh, ultrasound uh, vessel, ultrasonic back as well as ultrasonic probe. And we found that ultrasonic probe was uh, very much effective, uh, even at the comparatively power. Comparison with uh, uh, sonication bath. And here in this work, we utilize some uh, natural material in order to have that uh, full versions. Uh, where intensification has been done by means of uh, some sort of rheological modification. Uh, and this is the case where we utilize some interfacial interaction in order to facilitate that uh, uh, intensified process for emulsification uh, and that uh, which can easily uh, get stabilized at its own using some extra additive. And the extra additive used was that ionic liquid. So this kind of uh, addition, addition, some additive can also ultimately result in some... Uh, uh, so most of our uh, research uh, is uh, nature inspired, especially in the field of uh, interfacial engineering, where uh, this is not uh, this uh, super hydrophobic surface which are of creative columns. Uh, how to create the super hydrophobic back, uh, surfaces, how to uh, eliminate this form, especially in the uh, effluent treatment plant site or even in effluent treatment plant, uh, how to eliminate this form formation in some uh, reviewers. So lots of uh, interfacial phenomena is uh, involved. Here, if we are capable to identify that property, we can easily tune the surfaces and interfaces in order to achieve that required. Uh, so, uh, now accordingly, this uh, surface. Uh, so, uh, <clears throat> in order to Achieved that uh, micro mixing in our device, uh, we fabricated uh, PDMS micro channels, and this uh, PDMS micro channel was uh, charged uh, in a solvent uh, in charge mode. One and afterwards, it was dipped in the solvent, this weld, and the mold was removed, and, and this device was capable to produce uh, a controlled vacuum. So if you want to evacuate certain space, it can be easily facilitated by using this uh, kind of micro devices, which is uh, just uh, moving with the energy of the motive fluid only, no any other extra energy is required, just the energy of the motive fluid, and the energy available in the motive fluid is uh, utilized over here, and the fabrication of micro channels. The different uh, uh, methodology is uh, available in right Currently, in our uh, hands, this uh, encapsulation of uh, 
uh, hazardous droplets by means of some uh, bilers. Uh, we'll also uh, uncover that, uh, also avoid that exposure to the environment, and that can be also utilized for appropriate drug delivery applications. And uh, this is uh, just a procedural vaccine startup where we can be now fit to experiment using uh, some oil and water emulsion. And uh, droplets are also generated using this oil and water emulsion. And uh, this is my research group. Some of them have been just uh, passed out, uh, uh, clear set degree. And uh, this uh, biology is an important doing the PSP and domain. It is uh, an excellent award at this degree. It is also the award at the PSC degree. So, once again, thank you very much uh, for listening to me. Uh, I'd like to thank my institute for providing the facility for the research work as well as my students. And uh, once again, I thank you very much for the organizers for giving me this opportunity to uh, express my views on this particular topic. If you have any query or any question, you can ask. Thank you, sir. Participants, if you have any questions, you can unmute yourself and directly interact with the sir. Uh, I think uh, there are no questions from the participant. Thank you so much, sir. The session was full of knowledge. Sir has very nicely explained about the process intensification, its definition, and uh, the mathematical tools which can be used in process intensification. Sir has very nicely explained about process intensification of chemical reactors and mixing intensification and many more, many more. Thank you, sir. Thank you once again for accepting our invitation. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lars, sir. Sir, your mic is muted. So once again, I am thankful to I would like to express my thanks to Professor uh, Vagela sir and all his uh, organizing team. So thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. Thank you, sir. Okay, so now I conclude this session. So participants, uh, you can uh, leave now.